Hello and welcome. Last week we took measurements, this week we will draft the front moulage. The moulage is a blueprint of your bacon. Doesn't mean you're going to wear it, so it's very tight, it doesn't have any ease, it's hard to breathe, don't go using that for sewing. For this project you will need paper, but something that is wide and big, such as craft paper or flip chart paper. I use flip chart paper because it already has one inch markings and it helps immensely when making lines and calculating. A pencil, an eraser, colorful pens, and of course the measurements that we took in the previous video. A ruler, one of those triangle rulers or something you can square lines from. And if you do have them, one of those squiggly rulers for curves. The rules of the game. Skip to this timestamp in your screen if you are a rebel. I will work in inches because I find it easier to deal with when dividing. But feel free to use metric if you feel more comfortable. I will avoid mentioning numbers as much as possible because you will need to use your measurements here. All numbers I will mention are the additions or subtractions you will need to make to the numbers you already have in hand. This tutorial is very heavy, so feel free to slow down the speed in the settings on the bottom right of the screen and pause so you can take all of your notes. No worries, I will talk slower than usual. Again. I am offering a PDF file that you can download from my Facebook group to assist you and I suggest you have that in hand before starting the video, so pause this now, open a new browser tab, head over there and come back. The link is in the description. Work with a pencil because mistakes happen and thank goodness they are erasable on paper. And last but not least, name your lines and write down the measurements so you don't get lost. Don't be afraid, it's quite a lot of work, but the magic about the sloper is that unless your body changes a lot, you don't need to remake this each and every time. It is your forever template for everything you will ever sew from now on. Imagine the possibilities. <laughs> Let's get this started, shall we? The guidelines! All guidelines will be dotted so it's easier to see. The length of the lines in green are all industry standards, but their positioning generally depends on the calculations you make. Let's start with the front. First, draw a long and straight vertical line that will be your center front. You can also use the edge of your paper to save some time. Take your calculated low hip measurement for the front and square one perpendicular line at the bottom of the paper. Four inches above that, another line with the same measurement and four and a half inches above that, a third line with the same measurement. These are your low hip, high hip and waistline. Close that square. Remember that the distances between these lines are industry standards and they can vary as we discussed in the previous video. From the waistline, measure and mark the front length upwards. Square a line of four inches from the center front there and now three inches down, square an eight inch line for the cross front. Divide your front length in half and that's where your bust line is. On the bust line, mark the dot where your calculated figure breadth is and square a guideline from there. Two inch above the bust line and prolong to the lower hip. Are you sweating already? I am sweating profusely. Why is it that math makes me so nervous? Let's focus on the shoulder and neckline for now. On your neck guideline, mark your true calculated measurement. At the end of that, square one line upwards, adding one eighth of an inch to that measurement. Find the middle of that line and mark that point. From there, square a perpendicular line of six inches. Now things get a little tricky. We have visitors and someone that's very interested. What's happening? Sushi attack! Sushi attack! Yeah. No, don't puke on my bed. Ah! You're disgusting. You're disgusting. You're disgusting. You have to take your shoulder measurement and add the measurement of the dart according to your cup size. More info on that PDF file that I left below. Take that total measurement and with your ruler, find the exact spot that measurement lands on your new guideline. <sighs> Measure half of that shoulder, mark that spot for the first dart leg, add the dart width, and measure the other half of the shoulder to see if everything matches. The total width should be the shoulder plus dart. Now to mark the end of 
of the dart, you need your figure length measurement. Starting from the center front, where the neck guideline is, find the figure length measured on that guideline we drafted before. You know the one with two inches above the bust line that goes all the way down? The positioning of this dot depends on the body, the size of the breast, and the age of the person, so don't worry if it doesn't land on the bust line. This is your high figure point. Connect that point with the marked legs, and there you have your shoulder dart. Also, square that line back to the center front and extend it to the measurement of the bust because this is your new bust line. Hey, hey! To add a little shape, you need to curve your right dart leg a little bit. Mark one eighth of an inch on your cross front guideline and draw a curved line from the shoulder to the high figure point. Voila! Remember those two birds that came to visit? Well, so we cut all of this today. Every single part of my body hurts. Sushi, stop crying, please. And we found a bird's nest right there. It was very exposed, so we moved it. There were still three chickens inside. There's still one chicken there. And a chicken, but at least now he's not exposed anymore. His brothers were big enough to fly, but he's still so small. Sushi, this is all your fault because I said so. Yes, it was their nest. And yes, they came back, thank God to take care of the chick and everything is fine. Having cats in your garden is not for the faint of heart. Have to keep the other critters protected from those angry hunters. Now back to our thing. <laughs> now the waist dart. To determine the size of your waist dart, please refer to the PDF file again. It all depends on the difference between your waist and low hip measurements, like the real measurements, not the calculations. If you come to an awkward number, just round up. Always round up. On the waistline, mark half of your dart on the left side of your guideline and the other half on the other side. Next, mark half an inch down from the waistline and square a line up to the other edge so we can prepare our waist shaping. From the low hip line, mark on the guideline an industry standard of 3 inches for the end of your dart below the waist, where you mark the preliminary legs, square to that new half inch guideline, and connect the dots. There you have your lower part of the waist dart. Go back to the high figure point and mark 3 fourths of an inch down on the guideline for the low figure point. That will be the top of the waist dart. To add more fitting to your dart, measure one third of each leg and round one fourth of an inch to the outside make that dart curvy. Now that we are all good, add the dart measurement to the end of the waistline. Since you will be sewing that dart in, you need to add more fabric, otherwise the thing will not fit anymore. Do the same to the high hip line. Join those points together with straight lines. Yes, straight, at least for now. Go back to the waist shaping. Make a line up to the first dart leg and from the second leg to the waistline. Sushi. To work on the side, we need to know the size of the dart we need to insert. Check the chart again and add this number to the measurement you have. At the edge of the second bust line, square a 4 inch guideline upwards. Starting from the waistline, mark that measurement on that guideline we drew from the second bust line. The point where the line met the guideline is very important. Square a line from there, back to the center front. That is your third and final bust line, I promise. The side dart will come from the second bust line you drew. Mark half of the measurement on top and half below that line. Join those dots to the high figure point and you have your side dart. On the side line, mark 3 inches up from the waistline and take 1 eighth of an inch for a little shaping. Curve that side line up to the first leg of the dart you just finished. Things are now getting interesting. I know you're trying to steal my food. Now we need to mark our true cross front measurement. Considering that shoulder dart, one way to do it is to measure that tiny space and add to the end of the line like we did in the waist dart, or we can measure up to the dart, skip the dart, and continue measuring it until we reach the true measurement. No math, life hack, rebel life, oh yeah! At the end of the cross front, square a guideline down to the third bust line. On that intersection, add a 1 inch line on a 45 degree angle. On the bust line, mark half an inch in and 
and connect that point to the end of that tiny guide and the end of the cross front for a beautiful curve. Where that tiny guideline landed on the curve is the positioning of our armhole dart. Go back to the chart and mark half of the size to each side of the line and connect the dots to the high figure point. Finish the armhole by completing the curve up to the end of the shoulder line. To finish the neckline, do the same as we did for the lower part of the armhole. One inch guideline on a 45 degree angle, mark half an inch on the neckline and join those points on a curve. We're almost done, I promise. To finalize, you have to check your armhole measurement to see if it matches your true measurements. Don't forget to disconsider the dart. Most of the times it will be shorter than what we have on paper, so lower that shoulder line to the new measurement. And that's it for the front. Oy. My brain has now turned into mashed potatoes. If you survived to the end, congratulations. Hit the like button now and leave a comment below. The next video will be the back moulage. There's more math to come. We're not done yet. We can do this. I'll see you soon. Bye.